Welcome everybody to 24 Hours for Palestine, A Moon Will Rise from Darkness. Today is July 20, 2024, and right now it's 8 p.m. in Palestine. We begin. Over the next 24 hours, over 100 artists, activists, journalists, writers, researchers, and more from North America to Southwest Asia and across the world will come together on this platform to speak out against the ongoing genocide in Gaza being committed by the Israeli government and military with funding from the United States and to speak out against the 75 years of forced displacement, cultural erasure, murder of civilians, and systematic silencing of Palestinian voices, narratives, and heritage. My name is Sahar Asaf. I'm the Executive Artistic Director of Golden Thread Productions, the first U.S. theater company devoted to the Middle East, founded in 1996 by Turan Giagazarian. I'm zooming in from the unceded lands of the Ramayatush Ohlone people, known colonially today as San Francisco, California. By way of visual description, I'm an Arab woman with light skin and long gray and brown hair. I am wearing a black blazer with a kafi scarf. Behind me, there's a plain off-white background with a desk lamp on the side. And my name is Andrea Asaf. I am the founding artistic and executive director of Art to Action. I am an Arab American woman with tan skin, short dark hair, wearing a black button down shirt and a black kafia from Palestine. And behind me, there's a gray curtain and a white bookshelf with some plants. Art to Action is based in Tampa, Florida, the unceded ancestral lands of the Seminole and Tokabaga peoples. As we recognize the ancestral stewards of this land on Turtle Island and acknowledge that our presence here is a reminder of a dark history of colonization, dispossession, and genocide, it is outrageous that the US government has made us all complicit today in perpetuating the same cycle of oppression, land theft, and genocide of indigenous people elsewhere. As a U.S. theater company devoted to the Middle East, we denounce our government's sanctioning of war and genocide using our taxpayer dollars. We condemn Israel's state terrorism, use of banned weapons targeting civilians in Palestine, including Gaza and the West Bank, carpet bombing residential areas, hospitals, mosques, churches, schools, and refugee tents. We condemn Israeli settler colonialism, military occupation, and its system of apartheid. As a global community of theater makers and artists, it is our duty to activate each and every platform available to us to share the stories of Palestinians who bravely resist and persist despite overwhelming atrocities. We do this not only for Palestinians, but for our collective humanity. The genocide we are witnessing today extends beyond physical extermination. It is part of a systematic continuation of cultural and historical erasure. For years, there has been a continuous effort to silence the Palestinian people, deny their stories, and to erase their culture and history, and to silence artists who speak up for Palestine. 24 Hours for Palestine is a global call from artists and allies around the world for an immediate and permanent end to this genocide. 24 Hours for Palestine calls for an end to the apartheid system and Israel's illegal occupation of Palestine. We call for the complete and unequivocal liberation of the Palestinian people, including the right of return. And we call on our global theater community to stand with us and to speak out with us against genocide and for justice and liberation. We call for you to stand on the right side of history. 24 Hours for Palestine is organized and produced by Golden Thread Productions, co-produced with Art to Action and in partnership with the MENA Theater Makers Alliance, Ashtar Theater of Ramallah, the Freedom Theater of Janine, Zuhaq Theater Company of Lebanon, Noor Theater of New York City, Do Donkey Saddle Projects, and Dunya Productions of Seattle. Thank you to HowlRound Theater Commons for live streaming with us for 24 hours. 
In this global grassroots 24 hour live stream event, you will see performances, readings, films, discussions, and more. Our title, A Moon Will Rise from Darkness, is a reference to the legendary Palestinian poet Mahmoud Darwish. We were inspired by this quote because it reminds us that even in the most brutal times, in our darkest hours, there is hope, a hope rising. And it's this movement for Palestinian liberation that is bringing artists, students, leaders, activists, all of us to the streets and to our screens in the largest global movement for Palestine that I have ever, ever seen in my lifetime. There is a moon rising, and these voices that you will hear over the next 24 hours give us light. You can find the full program lineup at goldenthread.org, and you can follow Golden Thread and Art to Action on social media for real-time updates over the next 24 hours. And there's also a link to the digital program, and uh, so you can learn about all of the speakers and a resource list that you can access so you can learn how to take action and support. And now, we are very honored to begin with the Freedom Theater of Janine, Making Art in the Midst of War. This opening session will present the work that the Freedom Theater continues to produce amidst the worst circumstances their theater has faced in history. We will hear from their artistic director, Ahmed Tubasi, and other actors and students of the theater. I will hand it over to Gary English, former artistic staff at the Freedom Theater, distinguished professor of drama at UConn and visiting professor at Al-Quds University in Palestine. Gary will moderate this session. So Gary. Thank you very much, Sahar and Andrea for um, introducing us to this 24 hour uh, marathon for Palestine. Hello and welcome to our program presented by the artists and students of the Freedom Theater, a Palestinian theater company and arts center located in the Janine refugee camp in occupied Palestine. My name is Gary English and I will serve as a moderator for our program today. I had the privilege of working at the Freedom Theater from 2012 to 2016 and TFT was founded in 2006 by Juliana Merkamis, Jonathan Stanzak and Zachary Zubaydi and enjoys a unique standing and history amongst Palestinian theaters as it was founded and exists still today in perhaps the most violent location in Palestine outside Gaza. Janine has been attacked on and off for decades, dating back to 1948, the first intifada in the early 1990s, and in particular during the second intifada when the Battle of Janine took place in 2002. When the Israeli army destroyed over 500 buildings and killed over 100 Palestinians, TFT was founded in part based on the efforts of Mayor Kamis's mother, Arna Mayor Kamis, who operated the Stone Theater during the First Intifada as a children's educational and arts center in the camp. If you could advance the slide, please. <clears throat> The documentary film, Arna's Children, demonstrates the roots of resistance in Janine Camp. <clears throat> and if you've not seen this film, I highly recommend it to anyone interested in understanding more about the foundation of TFT's mission and history. TFT is located on School Street, just inside Janine Camp. And one of the defining elements of the theater includes the Martyr Cemetery, which is only a few hundred meters down the street. One of the founders, Zubaidi, was in 2002, a leader of the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade in Janine during the Second Intifada. And Giuliano Merkamis, the Palestinian Israeli actor and director, built the theater as a form of artistic or cultural resistance to the illegal occupation that has plagued Palestinians since 1948. This approach of artistic resistance to some extent flows from the writings of Ghassan Kanafani, who like Merkamis, believed literature and the arts were a necessary weapon against oppression. Because of the leadership of Mayor Kamis and Zubaydi in particular, and the collection of artists who have contributed to TFT's programming, the theater remains a major international symbol of resistance and defines a significant degree of its mission to use art and theater to inspire resistance and collectivize political action against the occupation and continued colonization of the West Bank by Israel, which has been noted by the United Nations and most recently by the International Court of Justice as a violation of international law. In addition, in large measure to the leadership of Stanzak and Kamis, Mayor Kamis, 
TFT also builds and implements programs for children and youth as a local cultural arts center to alleviate the stress imposed by this violence on the children of Janine Camp. And in the words of Renin Oda, allows the students to understand and attempt to actualize their human rights and find a form of individual liberation through creative expression. Today, we will hear from several members of the company, including Ahmed Tabasi, Artistic Director of TFT, Renin Oda, a former student of the TFT Acting School and current leader of TFT programs for children and youth, Ala Shaheda, also a graduate of the Acting School and a successful international actor and comedian, and three current students of TFT, Chantal Rizkala, Aya Samara, and Naka Samur. The title of our program, the Freedom Theater Making Art in the Midst of War flows from the current situation in Janine and the West Bank more broadly, but it also alludes to the reality of the theater's history from its inception. To begin, Ahmed Tabasi will speak about the theater and how it functions during these very difficult times. Tabasi is a well-known international actor who performed throughout the Middle East, the United Kingdom, and Europe. His one-man show, And Here I Am, directed by Zoe Lafferty and written by Hazan Abdurazik, has toured throughout the world and most recently played at the Avignon Festival. Please welcome Ahmed Tabasi. Thank you, Gary, and thanks everyone to make this happen. Uh, and hope we can uh, be here to give uh, some uh, something about what is going on in Jenin and Freedom Theater today. Do you hear me, Gary? Yeah, you're good. Yes, I hear you now. If you could just, if you could just give us a a review or uh, tell us a little bit about what the conditions are at the theater and in Jingdian Camp now. Yes, actually, I uh, I came back for three days to the camp. Uh, I was already in a small tour in, uh, in France. And I left, when I left before one month uh, and a half, I left like after two days in Vajin, uh, where 12 uh, Palestinians killed. And I did all uh, this work and I came back and it's really from all the way from uh, the border to Jenin, you see how the streets not the same. It's empty from the cars. There is no that life you feel. You feel worrying. You feel uh, there is something in the air which is not normal. Uh, and when I arrived to the camp and I tried to ask people, taxis, please, can uh, somebody uh, uh, take me to the camp? Where most of the taxi drivers were really not happy to drive to the camp. Uh, because, yes, I understood in the way where you see all the streets and all the ways to the camp and inside the camp to the Freedom Theater and the courtyard of the Freedom Theater, all the streets being bulldozed uh, and you can see just dust uh, holes in the streets and a very difficult daily life in this kind of camp uh, where uh, uh, electricity cuts and uh, uh, shortage water and uh, people are tired, people are afraid they waiting uh, uh, invasion to come. They are just waiting when the next time the Israel is going to come and invade and bulldoze again and again the streets. And that's also, as the Freedom Theater, part of Janine Camp, part of what is going on in the daily life, we really working uh, minute by minute. Uh, we make plans. We try to make productions. We try to make our... Uh, artistic plan, but with worry, uh, with each uh, minute, uh, the plan B and the plan C, plan G, plan E, F, uh, until the whole letters, because you never know what's going to happen next second. And to be honest, last time, uh, 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 I think Gary were here before in the uh, Feminist Theatre Festival in the middle of the show, 
where you have kids, women uh, uh, inside the theater when the army stormed and shooting everywhere, bombing, and we are surrounded inside the camp without any emergency uh, plan or any way to save the people inside the theater. And you know, each day there is uh, martyrs, each day there is demonstrations, each day there is invasions, and that makes our work more more challenging because uh, uh, in this kind of situation, people ask us what we're gonna do with theater. Uh, there is martyrs, destructions, killing, invasion, and you you gonna do theater for what? What theater gonna do? And for sure, this is our fight to say theater also is a way to fight. It's uh, it's also part of the struggle that we as a Palestinians and people from Jenin camp, as artists from Jenin camp, we have to do theater because all uh, what the Israelis, the occupation want us to do, to stop doing theater, to stop doing art. And for me, one of the most resistance uh, 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 way for me is to keep the Freedom Theater in Jenin camp and working to keep the sign of the Freedom Theater standing above the building where every day the Israeli army with their vehicles, with their tanks pass by to see that there is there is theater in Jenin camp. Yes, there is destruction, there is invasions, and yes, Palestinians and Jenin camp in the middle of Jenin, there is the Freedom Theater where we have artists and we have a stage and we have cameras and we have a, a, a blaze and the productions to do and to show and to make this place colorful and have their color by theater. The, uh, uh, for me, when the Israeli come and pass by uh, from the Freedom Theater, you know, they attack the theater as they're attacking the camp. They have no limits to say like, this is an artistic cultural institution. So maybe we need to deal with it with a bit of modern or moral way. Last time they come into the Freedom Theater, they destroy all the uh, uh, offices, the, the computers, the hard disks. They wrote a Hebrew signs uh, uh, and uh, uh, Jewish signs on the walls and the pictures. And it's very clear, it's an artistic building. It's a theater, it's a photography, it's pictures, it's books. And for sure, for me, that's the improvement they, for them. They don't want to see us as a Palestinian dreaming that we can have a theater, we can make art and we can make culture. They want to tell us that we cannot be something different more than a people under occupation, that they cannot have dreams, they cannot have uh, 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 colors. We, but we tell them with all the difficulties that we Freedom Theater is still in Jenin camp with all the difficulties, with all the destruction. I'm so proud today of all these difficulties. And I always, I ask how many theaters in this world work in the same circumstances and situations as the Freedom Theater. Freedom Theater deal with arresting, with, with, with invasions, with bombing, with shooting. You as an artist in Jenin camp with the Freedom Theater, you have the possibility that you're gonna be shot anytime, that you're gonna be imprisoned in any time. So that, that's the level of the danger of what's mean to be an artist and doing theater in Jenin camp and work in the Freedom Theater. So yes, the alert is so high and we know we, we, we're not just doing theater for us by the Freedom Theater, by the theater we're gonna resist. We want to express and we want to talk about our struggle uh, and we believe uh, uh, theater much important to, to deal with it as just an art case. It's a tool to change reality and make a better future. And that's how we believe the value of the theater. It, it's, thank you very much. It's, it's interesting to me that, that in addition to the programming that you do in the theater, which to some extent is made nearly impossible by the current circumstances, that the theater has always had a long time uh, history of touring internationally. Could you, could you talk about a little bit about the importance of international touring and why taking theater, theater productions to Europe, the United States, Africa, India, and so forth is so important? I think there is many reasons, but one of the things that we like become so clear uh, by this time and by this uh, genocide in Gaza, for the 75 years, the West, uh, America, the propaganda of Israelis, the propaganda of West, dehumanized Palestinians. 
uh, they, were, they showed Muslims, they showed Arabs, they showed Palestinians, freedom fighters as a conservative uh, Muslims like Al-Qaeda, like ISIS, and they mixed all the pictures uh, and, for, uh, and changed the whole narrative of how to present even Palestine and the Palestinian case. And I think today is very important to bring back the humanity, the culture, uh, uh, the picture of the Palestinian artist. For me, it's very important to keep this kind of connection for the international community, uh, uh, because I believe uh, the international community have to uh, get the clear picture to see the Palestinians, the human Palestinians, to bring them a real example of what's mean Palestinian and pa Palestinian artists. And for me to keep this connection, because the story, the, nar the narrative being changed, the propaganda being so strong, and the West spent a lot of money, a lot of resources to change the narrative. For me, it's important to bring the Palestinian artists, the Palestinian stories to every corner, to every stage in this planet. We as the Palestinians, we didn't have a fair chance to, to, to be on the stage, to present ourselves in the right way. I think today is very important to give more spaces, more chances to the Palestinian artists to represent again from the new time, how we Palestinians reflect on this world, how we reflect on what is going on, and we believe Palestine, it's a very important case, is an international case. All different connections to this case uh, affect the world. I believe this world will not relax if Palestine case not finished or not really had a solution. I think the key of all this world problems, conflicts, it's Palestine because Palestine become the case not only of the Palestinians, it's become a case for many different communities in this world to fight capitalism, to fight nationalism, to fight fasc fascism, to fight the white colonization mentality, to fight the narrative of, of all people being under colonizations uh, and incubations. Today, Palestine is representing the fight to stop this system, to make people awake and to stop this system and all of that through the Palestinian uh, uh, story. Great. Uh, it's it's interesting also to note that the Freedom Theater enjoys a, a network of friends organizations. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that, for example, there's the uh, Friends of Janine Theater in based in New York. There's one in the United Kingdom, one in Sweden. I believe there's one in Norway uh, and elsewhere. Could you talk just a little bit about the importance of this network of friends organizations that help support the theater? Uh, again, Gary, I believe, for me, I believe the Freedom Theater is an international theater and organization in Palestine. We have friends all over the world. I think Freedom Theater is a magical uh, a thing that happened to Janine to be established here. And without all this kind of mixed and international friends all over the world taking care of this idea, I don't think uh, Freedom Theater will be able to reach all this successful uh, uh, work around the world and represent the international issues and problems uh, uh, for the Freedom Theater. So I think one of the biggest problems in Palestine now and the uh, artistic culture organizations as a Palestinians that we face the conditional fund which is a new conditions from AU to control the Palestinian uh, uh, artistic cultural organization. And we are as a part of the BDS and we for sure support the boycott of all the occupational Israeli uh, uh, conditional fund. We refuse it. So it become a problem for the Palestinian institution to continue in somehow. And that where it comes a big role of our friends where they supporting us even financially. And sometimes they organize uh, a tours for the Freedom Theater. They make it possible uh, uh, to continue our program without being uh, under a, a conditional fault, for example. And to be honest, I believe also to create this kind of movement that we need an artistic cultural movement all over the world to be together, to support each other. The problem is not only the Palestinian artist. I believe there's artists in Ukraine who has problems and censorship. I, I believe there is 
artists in China, there's artists in Africa, there's, there's artists in Russia, there's art, artists in America who are censored. So we need to create this kind of international community where we artists and international uh, uh, artistic uh, organization support each other and make uh, effect on any place where artists can have censorship. So for me, yes, to be honest, without all this care and help and solidarity from our friends all over the world, especially the US friends, the French friends, uh, and many other friends, even without even an official name, where we feel they are the ones who make us continue because we are not alone. We feel that they're asking about us, they try to support us in every way possible, and that's what makes us as the Freedom Theater not feel alone in this fight, and that's what gives us energy to continue even after invasions and after arrest and after tortures. I believe you, when I, when, when I went out from the, uh, 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 the prison the last time they get me, and I saw how much friends have be, been fighting for freedom, for our freedom and our release and for the Freedom Theater, I, it was an answer for me uh, because I always doubt myself. It's what we're doing is really right, is really effective, is really doing something. And yes, in these dark moments, you see how much the Freedom Theater and the people who care for the Freedom Theater and the family, the friends around the world who believe in our work is standing there. And I promise you, this support gives us a lot of energy to take all these difficulties and the struggles and continue. So I think it's a very important, our friends around the world, they are part of our struggle. They are the motor who, can, who drive us to continue when we see that people believe in us. I don't think it's easy. Everyone needs to see there is some people believe in you so you really can make miracles. Wonderful. Um, so last question, just quick. Um... I know you've been, you know, you're from Janine Camp. Your house is across the street from the theater, you know, and so you've been there from the beginning, one way or the other. I wonder if you could just take a minute and reflect on on Giuliano uh, and what he has meant to you, and and what his what his presence still means today. I think uh, Giuliano, and I think Arna, they are smiling now. They are smiling to see that the Freedom Theater with this, all of the most crisis, difficult issues is still there, standing there. The friends of the Freedom Theater all over the world, the students of the Freedom Theater all over the world, the work of the Freedom Theater all over the world. And I'm sure he's happy because he gave us the same conflict, the same fight he was trying to teach us. And now there is not only one Giuliano, there is many Giulianos, there is son of Giulianos, there is sons of Arnas all over the world that believe in the message, believe in the fight, believe how smart and how strong that the, fam the family of the Freedom Theater. And I cannot forget everyone in the friends who have been in these difficulty places and times because I know, because I follow and I followed from uh, 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 the Stone Theater, I was a little child. Uh, from the first intifada, when I saw Arna come to the streets of the camp with the with the with the colors, with the papers, when they opened the children's houses, I saw how how the idea is strong to live all this time until now. And I'm telling you that the the, the, the freedom theater is strong is because it's an idea, and idea cannot die. There is always be somebody. It's always will be some people to continue. I'm telling you, it's not romantic. I know it's not easy, it's very difficult, it's very harsh, but you do it with joy. We, as we saw it and our friends saw it, we die and we suicide in a very beautiful, beautiful way. We're doing theater and for me, we, we, we enjoy the success today that the Freedom Theater being announced for Nobel Prize and what we need more to be recognized in this way. Thank you, Tabasi, so much for sharing that with us. And I look forward to talking to you more at the end of the session. Thank you. Next up, we will hear from Ala Shaheda, who performed in numerous TFT productions, including The Caretaker by Harold Pinter and Suicide Note from Palestine, written and developed by Nabil Arai and Mikaela Miranda. Ala, Ala 
currently resides in Amsterdam and continues his work with the theater company Hotel Courage. He has developed a one-man play, The Horse, which you saw perhaps at the opening of our session in our opening slide, which alludes to a sculpture of a horse built from blown up car parts left over from the first intif second intifada and has until recently stood as a monument to the courage and resilience of Palestinian resistance in the center of camp for over 20 years. Please welcome Allah Shahada. Hello, Salam alaikum. Hey Gary, how are you doing? Uh, I'm very thankful for everyone who's listening right now for uh, our voices from Janine and uh, the stories that is happening nowadays in, in Janine. Uh, I would love to share with you, but before I share, would shall I say something before I start, Gary? Or uh, as like, you like, you know, if you want to say a little bit about the theater or about the piece that you're going to read from. Do you want to talk a little bit about the... Your... Okay, I th okay. And then I th I'll start reading and then maybe we have... Sure. Oh, it's not the time. Yeah? Yeah, we're all set. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, so I'll, I'll start reading a few scenes of the solo performance, The Horse of Janine. And this is, we are still uh, work under progress that we're still writing the piece. And uh, hopefully we will be, not hopefully, like for sure, we are premiering the piece in September in Amsterdam. And we hope that we'll bring it to the US next year. I'll be reading a few scenes and then we can have a discussion after that. Great. November 9th, the 1991. Nothing special about that day, except me coming to life. I weighed three kilograms and a half. And I was the first boy of the family who came to this planet with the weight of three kilograms and a half. My mom cried so much seeing me more than I did. My mom already lost two of my brothers before me, so the whole city had to gather to eat sweets and cry for seven days celebrating me coming to life. And I, as a baby child who just left his mom's belly, I wonder, why? Why everyone is eating sweets and crying? I was held between 12 uncles and nine aunts. Everyone held me and kissed me once or twice or three times from uncles to aunts to cousins. And then my grandfather entered the room and he told me, welcome. And he gave me my ever force first toy, a horse a little tiny horse. And he told me a horse is a symbol of freedom, my grandson, be a horse, not a donkey. Till today, my mom still have it. My grandfather prayed in my ears to have a full life, success and peace. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah. Hayya ala salah. Hayya ala al-falah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. And he left me in my bed to sleep. April 2002. I am 11 years old and I weigh 41 kilograms. The Israeli army invaded whole Jenin. The whole city and the camp was totally destroyed. I walked through Jenin, it looked ravaged. The streets were full of shuttered houses, bombed cars, and destroyed ambulances. We were buried amongst the destruction, but we did not give up. 
Instead, we started rebuilding. Jenin showed the whole world our strength, our spirit, our resistance. April 2003, I am 12 years old and I weigh 47 kilograms. And the first line of my mustache is appearing. Suddenly a German artist is coming to Jenin. I asked my friend, what is an artist? And he said, an artist who wears a, a, a cap and with a mustache and he show off. I said, I wanna be an artist too. Why not? I want to be an artist and, and I, I want the German artist to come and ask me and tell me, please, Allah, please, can you come? Please, can you come with me to Germany? You don't deserve living here. You, are, you we need, we need you. And then I say no. Then he will insist again. Please come. The world needs you. I say no. Then he will insist again. Please, we need you. Then I go to Germany. Then I become a Germany an artist as uh, in Germany as an artist. And everyone is looking at me. Look at the artist. The artist is walking. The artist is thinking. The artist is cooking. The artist is sleeping. But the real German artist, the only thing he did is collect rubbish. Huh? I thought, is he coming all the way from Germany to clean our rubbish? Is it a German thing to do? To recycle our rubbles? But this German artist, he was collecting demolished stuff, scrap metals from destroyed houses, bombed cars, and, 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 and bombed ambulances, like uh, the ambulance of Dr. Khalil Sleiman, who his ambulance was bombed in March 2002. This German artist, he was cutting and composing with the help of 15 Palestinians. After four weeks, he revealed the result. He wanted to show us the strength that he saw in us. He had built a horse. Don't get me wrong, a statue of a horse, but a huge horse, massive legs, ginormous neck, humongous eyes, five meters high, looking up to the sky as if it had a strong connection with God. We, the people of Jenin, we drove the horse around the city and everyone was so proud of it, amazed. People felt uplifted by it. You may know or not, the horse in Arabic is a symbol of freedom, but this horse is much more. This horse is not just a symbol of our freedom. This horse is a symbol of our resistance. This horse is a symbol of our vitality. This horse is us. After that, we took the horse all the way to Ramallah. And why not to show it to Arafat, the president? We, all the kids, went to Ramallah and it was passing by a flying by checkpoint where you see the horse is standing. And I just wonder, will they ask the horse about his ID? Will they investigate the horse? Will the horse be sent back to Jenin? After two hours, it passed. We arrived to Ramallah. We showed to the people of Ramallah, but not Arafat. We came back all the way to Jenin. And it was the day where we opened the premier, the horse, and the mayor of Jenin gave his own speech. And he wanted to make a joke. And he said that this horse was his idea, not the German artist. The German artist did not find that funny at all. After that, we built a roundabout and we placed the horse right in the middle of it. And we called it the horse roundabout. I myself loved that. Every time I drove by, I made a few extra rounds looking at it from whole angles. This horse is looking bigger every time. It became the meeting point. During the day, we ate falafel there. We had our spicy, uh, we have our spicy food and we had our Arabic bitter coffee. We fought there, we loved each other there. We shared our secrets, dreams, 
and stories while the horse is listening. At night, when we are asleep, this horse is not. It watches over us. October 30th, 2023. I am 31 years old and I am on a keto diet and I weigh 82 kilograms. The Israeli army entered Jenin like every night, nothing new. But tonight something felt different. Tonight, they did not come to kill or arrest one of us, no. Tonight, something felt different. Tonight, they did not come to dig up our streets or destroy someone's home, no. Tonight, something felt different. Tonight, they came with a bulldozer. But again, tonight, something felt different. They drove it all the way past our homes, our schools, our hospitals, our mosque, our church. Straight, and they headed straight to the horse. And they ripped it out of the roundabout. Our symbol of a freedom as a piece of garbage once more. Since that day, my question remains, what happened to the horse? Did they arrest it? Did it go to court? Was it able to defend itself? Did they, did they interrogate the horse? Did the horse tell them anything about my secrets? Did the horse tell the Israeli army about the kiss I had with Jumana secretly at the roundabout and the fact that she didn't like it? Did the horse tell that four fair brothers came and beat me up, broke my nose and flipped my lip when they found out that I kissed their sister? And when everyone asked me, why, what happened to you? I lied and I said, mm, the army, the Israelis. I don't know. But did they ask it? Do you condemn Hamas? I can't let go of this feeling that this act hurt me more than the many other things they did to us. I mean, this horse is our identity. They had taken our core identity. However, What you don't know, I've already rebuilt my own horse. My horse is not made up of rubbish. My horse is made up of memories around this horse. Memories I made with my friends, having coffee, eating falafel, meeting Ahmed, my friend. A horse made of memories, even stronger, even more beautiful. You can arrest a horse, destroy it and take it away but you can never destroy its meaning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Allah. That was great. Um, when, did, when did you start developing this piece? Well, since I read on Instagram uh, about uh, the horse and since I the moment you saw it you were like what they talk the horse since that moment it was kind of like really big shock and it's something that did not leave my head since that moment because it doesn't make any sense okay i understand incubation army bulldozers deny okay it's understandable but in the end of the day it's a piece of rubbish you know it's a bit of a piece of irony like why you take that piece and, and what's what's interesting for me, they did not destroy it. They did not made it like, they didn't scratch it, no. They just took it, they ripped it out and they flipped it and they put it uh, on the bulldozer and they drove it away all the way uh, to Israel. So this is interesting for me, like why? Like what is the meaning behind? Is that horse with that power, really? 
is it wow this is something that you appreciate right and and what what plans do you have for the plea for the for the play as it develops further well uh almost we have a draft of the show and now we are going to open to premiere the show in september we will do a few trying outs in amsterdam then we are opening it in amsterdam we're doing a little tour in the netherlands and then in october we're going to do a few shows in london and then hopefully we come to new york next january i hope so we make it happen and because i feel this is very important to go around just let the people hear the story through this little five meters horse you know it tells you everything about the daily life of the palestinians it tells you about the whole dimensions of the palestinian personality it's not just you know the the, the stereotype about palestinians we have everything like the rest of the world so it's good to show this also because i think in this way we get closer to people ah because of the stereotype people become very judgmental at us and then no ah they have the same feelings ah yeah Ah, oh, this yeah. Of course, they get angry. Yeah, if I lived his life, I would get angry too. You know what I mean? Sure. So that, that's the spirit of the piece. That's great. Um, I'm curious. You know, like with Tabasi, you have been with the Freedom Theater for a very long time. You were a, a young acting student there. We worked together there. Could you talk a little bit about what the Freedom Theater has meant to you? Oof. Well, of course, I won't be here right now talking during this 24 hours uh, about uh, the current situation of Palestine. You know, the Freedom Theater is, uh, maybe people think when we speak about theater, is, is it kind of cultural thing and it's easy to have it in your daily life. It is a struggle for people to get into theater, to convince the society, no, I can take acting as a career in my life. This is a struggle. I lied to my parents years where I tell them I do other things, but in reality, I was going to the Freedom Theater. So it is a place for everyone to really achieve his dreams, especially for artists, for people who's fighting for the freedom of speech, for, 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 for fighting their personalities to improve their skills to really uh, find yourself uh, uh, as a human in a, in a human level, as a person, and then as an artist. So, uh, you know, it's a big impact. It was the basic three years of education I had there with a lot of good teachers coming from all over the world for teaching and Gary, you were one of them. And we had this, uh, the caretaker show, uh, you know, when Nabil, the director also was arrested and then we had the, the rehearsals. Uh, clowning, stand-up comedy, masks, it opens the whole world, uh, the whole artistic world. And I I always, I say we're lucky because we got a lot of uh, teachers who's coming from different backgrounds with the huge skills and et cetera, et cetera. At the same time, we got a lot of boring people coming <laughs> to the theater. And those people, is one of them, one of the teachers is one of the show when he, someone is coming from America it's not you, Gary. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> and all those people who's coming just, you know, just to, to, to express their solidarity with respect. But at the same time, this is not helpful. You are playing the stereotype. You are not listening to the needs of those people. It's not about their living bad times and looking for food, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's a place where you really can fight, where you it gives you courage, gives you power to find the community to to fight for your future. It is that place when you sit there and you see all this collective with the same goal, with the same strength that we keep going, we see the same goal. This is a big power. This environment is the motor that keep you going as an artist. And the finally, and finally, thank you so much. And finally, I know that you ha have an intense interest in comedy and you've helped develop the, the Palestinian Comedy Club and you've turned, you toured with other comedians um, around Palestine. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of comedy as political resistance or the importance of comedy as part of the theater scene in Palestine? Well, you know, 
uh, our culture, we many things we don't say. We keep we keep hiding them, but we know that we do them, but we hide them. And here comedy comes, you know. Like let's be honest and say the truth about those things. We know <laughs> we all do those things under the table, but let's be honest for a second. So uh, comedy is bringing those moments together where people noticing their secrets, their 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 their, their, their uh, habits. Uh, in the community, in the really conservative community, like in Jenin. So this, this is one thing that we try to be really honest and flexible on a stage so people can relax because the situation is very tough, stress. I want people just to be relaxed about those things and just be honest. That's who we are, you know what I mean? And instead of just hiding behind it. And comedy is helping when you laugh at those things, say, yeah, I need that, you know, I know you you won't like it, you will judge me, but we know that we both need it, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So right. this is where comedy really uh, arrives. And, you know, we, we're in Janine, it's very tough. You need people to really relax, to really laugh. And, you know, with comedy, you can really hit also very red line subjects. And this is the power also of comedy in a place like Palestine, where you have many red lines, the occupation, the community, the parents, the judgmental, all the problems around you. So a lot of red lines. So you have to take care how to dance around those red lines, which is a nice challenge. Sometimes you flop, but <laughs> next day you wake up, make it funny again. Thank you so much, Allah. We so appreciate it and look forward to talking to you again at the end of the session. Thank you so much, Greg. Thank you. Next, we will hear from three of the current students at TFT who will read portions of their writing that they created in response to the situation in Janine and at the Freedom Theater. Our first reading will be by Chantal Rizkala. Yes, hi. So um, uh, the name of my poem called Ecos of Absurdity. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. Ecos of Absurdity. In the peculiar sitcom that is life in the Gaza Strip, we found ourselves caught in a cosmic joke, living what can only be described as the worst stand-up routine ever. Picture this. Invaders deciding to spice up their home invasion game by turning it into a dark comedy special. Spoiler alert, it didn't end well for the, the families, especially when they added explosive baby grenades to the punchline. Talk about a surreal baby shower that left everyone in stitches, quite literally. But hold on. The hospital drama take a, takes a mysterious turn. In a crowded hospital filled with displaced people and more tents than a circus, the invaders thought they were auditioning for a fire dance routine. They threw bombs on the tents, turning it into an unintentional barbecue party with a gruesome twist. And just to make sure the audience was thoroughly perplexed, they walked over the bodies as if rehearsing some bizarre dance of the dead. In a subplot that's stranger than a conspiracy theory, they invaded houses in the North, turning it into an unconventional reality show where they mistook it for a sinister dating event, the twist. It involved heinous crimes and a shocking family reunion with bullets and kidnappings. It's like they stumbled upon a script from the Twilight Zone. And in a migration tale that would make Hitchcock proud, they allowed people from the North to migrate South. But at the, at the enemy checkpoint, they turn it into an impromptu scavenger hunt forcing everyone to leave uh, positions behind, including money, gold, and even official papers. Move over Treasure Island. This is a real-life dark comedy quest. 
in a bizarre twist of body snatching escapades, they stole the bodies of martyrs from hospitals only to bring them back sans organs and with mysteriously faceless features. It's a horror comedy mix that even Tim Burton might be might find perplexing. In the grenade finale, a house in Jabali become the setting for an uh, otherworldly disappearing act. A girl went out the window to call for help, but the missiles turned it into a magic show gone wrong. Not a trace of the of the house left. Abracadabra, or in this case, Abragon. All of this is just a mysterious snippet of the surreal sitcom currently playing in the gas strip. Call the 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 laugh track, or maybe the X file theme music. Thank you. Thank you, Chantal. That's a beautiful piece of writing. Thank you for sharing it with us. Next, we will hear from Aya Samara. Aya, are you with us? Yes, hi everyone. It's Aya Samara. I'm very happy to be here with you. Uh, I'm gonna read my text. It's called uh, Fragments of Existence. What is the meaning of time? And what? Can you hear me? Yes, I think we're good now. Okay, I think I thought it, it was a problem or something. Okay, so uh, fragments of existence. What is the meaning of time? And what is its reality in our lives? Time here is like a dagger. Time here means slow death. I believe that our lives are not measured by numbers, but by the number of shocks we have experienced. As we go through life towards our dreams and ambitions, uh, we are forced again to return to less than zero. Everything we plan for can disappear in a second or less. Time may retreat, advance, or suddenly stop in a way that physics and science cannot explain. What about life? What is life if the sun hides under the rubble? Is life just a puzzle or a distant dream amidst the challenges we face? Our days repeat, becoming harder. We live in a constant, in a constant confusion and insane instability. Since the start of the latest invasion, until this moment, I constantly think about my life. I feel a huge anxiety about myself, my friends, and the people I love. I'm afraid to watch videos or news, and I sleep for many hours as an attempt to stop thinking. I get tense when I receive any notification. Uh, if I receive any notification, hoping it's not a news of more loss or destruction. With each invasion, I feel that I lose a soul from my souls. Perhaps I need something more than life to feel that I am still living. And perhaps I do not understand how life can be because I have never really lived it. I am still looking for a window that looks out on life. As all the windows I look through threaten me with Okay, so it looks like we may have lost Aya's feed. Her camera went off and now because of internet connection issues, which are frankly constantly an issue in Janine and in Janine camp, we I'm afraid we've lost the end of Aya's reading. So we will go on, however, um, to the next reading from Naka Samur. Naka, are you with us? Hello, everyone. I am Naka Samur. Uh, thanks for having me here. The title of the text I wrote and participated in is uh, I Will Keep Dreaming Tomorrow is Important. And this is uh, part of the Youth Against Invasion project. So um, 
I will keep dreaming. Tomorrow is important. I'm 20 years old. And until now, I have mixed feeling about what's happening. They say the beginning of your 20s is the beginning of youth. The time when dreams for a better tomorrow and a happy future bosom and chin. The time to try and succeed in your ambitions without worried about failure. To begin planning and cultivating with your strength and energy. I am now at this age. I will start my day tomorrow as I dream. I plan to wake up and wake up early and go to the theater. After training is over, I will film a party and later return home to do my inversion. Tomorrow, and university homework tomorrow is an important day. I finished planning. Good night. Thank. At one half thirty a.m., scene sound in the city of Jenin. The official pages announce the Israeli occupation forces are storming Jenin city and the camp. The aggressions will continue until nine or 10 in the morning, depending on, on how long the occup occupier went, wants to stay and keep us under careful. Short, 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 caches and terrifying sounds. I cannot sleep, everyone is tense. Tonight is very difficult. I am scared for my family. The neighborhood I live in sur surround the camp. I am afraid that a polite will hit the wall of my house or a, mem a member of my family. I hear the news of my newborn martyrdom. Bombs, arrests, shooting, bombing, it was a night full of terror and I could not sleep. Then the morning came and all my plans were gone because of the meritidom of my neighbor. The now, now committed of streak and mourning across, across Geneva. This is how they end all uh, aspects of our life. It is the series of my daily existence. This is how we are deep, deep provide of our most basic right. One night of attack uh, was enough to end everything I planning. As if they were saying to me, we are the ones who control your life. You just have to remain silent and Accept leaving is home legion. Sometimes they um, come to my house, placing their snipers that there to still leaves. Uh, other times they attack the sample of my dreams, the Freedom Theater located behind my house. I see them for the window of my room, exchanging with positions around the theater there later, later pushing me down and a voice saying, forget the theater. We have turned in, into our military parties. Will the place that pro, uh, produce freedom certainly uh, throw expressions and uh, generation that believes in art as resistance, turn against into a place where people are killed, robbing their freedom and their films. I want to scream, stop. Silence of anyone Arab leaders, silence in prisons of gener genocated in Gaza, uh, ugliness, uh, distractions, killing of children, elderly women and men, 
how can your souls return to a normal life after witnessing uh, all of this? I continue and head out nightmare. The feeling of helpsman is he heavy and the feeling of silence in prison of death is painful, but the means of resistance will not end and we will not leave, nor will we despair. Jeanine is here as if to wear little Gaza. How can a mother lose four of her children in one night and remain steadfast and hopeful, refuse human and sub submissions to an arrogance occupation? This is Janine, and this is a real 20 years of my life and 75 years the Palestinian people. Our people deprive life, loving the love it's sweet and better and to meet their enemy wish pride honor and dig dignity it is either freedom and life or death with dignity of on this land the occupation will not serve it, it is either uh, us or us a moment of silence it's okay i will go again tomorrow is important day I the theatrical performance fi filming of uh, criminy and uh, exam at the university. Continue pass. I hear the silence again. Again, the pages uh, and ones that entry of the Israeli occupation army and invasion of Jenin and its camp. The army is close to us this time. I am afraid a fatal bullet will uh, penetrate the wall of my house and destroy my dream. I am back to zero. I, I am 20 years old, and until now I have lived in a mass called the occupation, which control me, my life, my feelings, my dreams, and my plans. But for how long? Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, because my English now. <laughs> Not God. <laughs> No, no, that was wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that with Thank us. You. It was just Thank terrific. You. Next up on our program is Renine Oda, leader of the TFT programs for children and youth, who will share with us the activities she participates and leads and will talk about how conditions in the camp during the current violence affects the programming and the children she works with. Renine is an actress and has performed in many TFT productions, including I Am My Own Enemy, which is based on a deconstruction of the Medusa myth and the international award-winning production of Return to Palestine, developed by Mikaela Miranda. Please welcome Renine Oda. Thank you, Gary. Today, I'm here for the front you to speak about core of my artistic vision and our shared future. The children of freedom, these children are not just our future. They are also the soul of the prison, our presence in the camp between the rubble was thanks to them because they give us important lessons about the true meaning of freedom. Their innocent laughter can be heard in the camp and the street of the city. Is uh, the driving force that makes us continue to challenge and innovate to give them the to tools and arts that will make them achieve their dreams. Our goals focus to serving children and providing sub support to very child to every child 
so that he can discover himself, develop his skills and express his feelings. We aim with all our power to provide a free and open and open space for them to express themselves and their personal and social issues. Our child and youth department is always evolving based on the visions and the dreams of the children because we believe that they know their needs and desire better that anyone else for here from here we coordinate our programs and goals in the line with their ambitions to build a bright future to build a bright future that enables them to become leaders that can change society. Every year, we organize summer and winter activities. In the summer, we offer the Freedom Academy summer program, which brings to together a large number of children over a whole month where we help them discover multiple types of arts and enhance their physical and sensory ability. After the academy, we continue to work with them throughout the year through the child to child theater program, which allows children to before to perform multiple multiple roles as actors, directors, lighting and sound technicians and stage managers in amazing environment. We also offer theatrical, offer theatrical performance throughout the year until the winter, until the winter at which, and which point the child, the, the children are ready to work in performance, artistic, professional production. Also, we have programs targeting women and youth, especially women, because they are in this brand need of space, space where they can express themselves, their problems and their dreams without judgment. We offer them support and our therapy pro programs. And include the mothers of mar martyrs, martyrs group. This group helps them deal with the shock of losing their children through play and releasing emotions. And we work with a group of mother and their children with the aim of helping them deal with the trauma of, of repeated army entering into Jenin camp. These families 
have had their homes raided many times and parents have been arrested in front of their children. Our programs provided them with a, sp with a space to play and results release their emotion, helping to undo the effects of this trauma. We have important par partners in this journey, such as Palestinian Circus School, Palestine, Clown Without Borders, Borders, Sweat, a child, Children Without Borders, Japan, the Arab American University, Palestine, Clown Me and Lebanon, and the Friends of the Freedom Theater in the French, Sweden, America, and other friends in the Freedom Theater in the world. We work together. We offer program targeting different segments of society and we seek to achieve, we seek to achieve, to achieve a rich culture and knowledge, 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 knowledge exchange. Last year, we lost three children to Israeli army gone fire. We lost Sadil Nagnagiye, Mahmoud Saadi, Yaman Jarrar. As our wounds bleed from their lost. We thought about how to save our children from this brutal, brutal army. So we decide to transfer the activities of the child and youth department from Freedom Theater in Jenin Camp to the Freedom Theater School in Jenin City. Despite the continuing dangers and the repeated entering of the Israeli army into the city of Jenin, we continue our activities. And today we continue with the Freedom Summer Academy program for children. We will continue to present the arts until our last breath because we believe that the arts are our strong, strongest weapons in the face of injustice and oppression. Thank you. We will continue our work to empower and support our children as there are the hope of the future and the voice of the freedom and culture resistance. Thank you. Thank you, Renin. It's great to see you again. And it's great to see how well you're doing despite the circumstances. So do, do I understand that you're able to continue the programs currently, right now, you're able to continue your children's programs in the city facility? Yes. And have you, is is it difficult to get the families to allow their children to come come to the, to the theater? Yes, of course, because uh, all, all people in, in Jinin City 
feeling afraid about uh, children uh, situation uh, every day every day the israeli army come to Junin and uh, shooting bombing and this is difficult for us how we can continue uh, our programs and always we have another plan uh, and uh, always uh, we thinking uh, if the Israeli army come to Jenin, how we can save our children, how we can uh, protect them. Mm. But, but we decided we want to continue. Right. Well, you, were, you yourself were uh, a student at the Freedom Theater Acting School. Could you talk a little bit about what that has meant to you? Whoa. <laughs> okay. Uh, it was different. Uh, it's uh, it's my favorite because uh, the Freedom Theater School uh, changed me. And uh, the way I think uh, this push, push me to help uh, others. And uh, always I remember you because you are my favorite teacher. Uh, you change everything in myself and in my mind. And now it's, it's my time to to change other and i want told you gary thank you thank you so much well you had some wonderful yeah. teachers nabil and mikaela uh were were mikaela baranda and nabil Arai were 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 the artists there at the time who certainly had a big impact on your life and everyone else's I'm wondering if now if Allah Shaheda and Tabasi could you rejoin us turn on your cameras and we could have a few concluding questions about things at the Freedom Theater and what what the future is. If if Tabasi, you're around, if you could turn on your camera as well. Um, and and so I I guess as we begin to get to to the end of our program, um, uh, Allah, you're now in Amsterdam, and um, but I know you go to some extent back and forth and and um how important is it for you to be able to stay connected to the freedom theater uh and to operate when you can in palestine well as palestinian artists we always have the responsibility to tell our stories despite if you're in palestine or outside of palestine but I think also it's very important back home uh, that we all, in the middle of those hard times, try to be supportive. Uh, and, and I mean, this time is really sensitive, is really horrible, because people are going so crazy. A lot of, I, I was there 10 days ago and I saw the depression, people's faces, sadness and, and, and frustration and, and then people are still surviving. People still are, you know, trying to produce their costs so they can live a few months later with their surviving, uh, survival uh, situations. At the same time, at the theater, you try to 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 find the space to find to to help the artist, to help anyone who's creating, who's uh, really doing anything at the theater. At the same time, it's really sensitive because of the current situation when you have the army coming in and out almost every day. What the theater situation can be, what kind of continuation, what kind of uh, stability, uh, what kind of stability in your uh, career as an artist you know so it's an up and down up and down and you have to adapt yourself all the time for all the new conditions that's happening you need to expect that the armies co are coming in in any second in the middle of the show last october the army came when we were watching a show in the freedom theater and then suddenly we have an israeli undercover soldiers literally by the walls of the theater and 
the, the electricity went off and we had no option, nothing to do. At the same time, you know, everyone starts to stress and then uh, the kids start to, to cry. And, you know, we, we did our best. This is the reality that we live in. And we just all the time wake up and we try to to to, to adapt to, to, to this. Yeah, Tabasi, Ranin, and and Ala, I, I just sort of have one final question for you guys. Um, you know, it it occurs to me that that a lot of what Giuliani used to talk about, and similarly Zacharia about the idea of cultural resistance. Um, uh, Zachariah told me once that, and this sort of follows Kanafani, that uh, that cultural resistance is not a substitute for armed resistance, but that it explains it. Um, can you talk a little bit about what the relationship of cultural resistance is to the national movement? I think, <clears throat> Gary, we have to be very careful how we present this kind of different resistance because there is some discussion about theater is not a violent or some other people who carry guns, for example, or they believe in other ways of resistance. They think culture uh, or art is a soft way of resist. And that's what we say. Not really. Uh, theater is very dangerous. Theater is very violent. We're not talking about what more violence way to resist. We talk about culture of resistance. We believe in the theater that Cultural resistance is much bigger than to put a resistance in one way or in one tool. We believe that culture should be a way of living, a way of doing things. A, a resistance a, should be in our daily life. Doesn't matter where you are, what you do as a student, as a teacher, as a driver, as a mother in the house as a doctor, as an actor, as a director, as a singer, as a dancer, we doing resistance by continuing and believing in what we do. And for me, exactly, that's what the Israelis want us to think like before, the propaganda, to say that resistance is only gun uh, and other things are not resistance. No, for us, we believe in the Freedom Theater as the, the founders of the Freedom Theater believes that for example, Giuliano gets killed in the front of the theater, and we believe because we were doing something so big, we were put focus on a very sensitive cases. Some people or some sides did not like it, and the theater killed Giuliano. And we believe today also why going to the theater in this kind of circumstances, we I waiting a bullet in my head each time I cross my street to the theater. I know how sensitive, I know how dangerous to do theater in this kind of this situation. Not only me, all the team of the Freedom Theater who going every day to the theater or to the activities, we know that we're doing one of the most dangerous actions in this kind of time. For me, we are a fighters. We, as the Giuliano and Zakaria says, the stage is our AK-47. And we believe that each gun, each freedom fighter need a culture and art to save and explain why we're doing and we're carrying these guns. And also as the founders of the Freedom Theater, where we're believing the third intifada will be a cultural artistic intifada. We believe through theater and art and music and dance, we will present our case, we will express ourselves and we will arrive to every corner in this world to present the Palestinian story. Thank you very much, Allah, Tabasi, Renin. And thanks to um, Sahar. For, uh, to finish, and... yes, to, to finish this event, Gary, is very important to mention this text with the, with our students and our uh, girls. Yeah. I'm so proud of them that we all Palestinians spoke in English, actually. So I hope that the Americans, well, they will put the offer to speak Arabic and to learn more about us. So this text was from the invasion, uh, uh, Youth Against Invasion is a, a collaborating project with the artist frontline and we put all these kind of testimonies and texts please check the culture intifada website and you will find a lot of resources and for sure thanks to you gary and to all people who are organizing this thanks so much tabasi i will now introduce our next session entitled palestinian artists in the global diaspora 
a conversation with Palestinian theater and film artists moderated by Catherine Correa, arts professor at NYU and producing associate at Noor Theater. Farewell and thank